Two of the largest industries to affect civilization are the power generating industry and the building industry. Modern society simply could not function without them. Yet, these two giant suppliers of our needs are inextricably linked to bring better products at lower costs and at the same time significantly reduce the environmental impact they each have on the world around us. What we're talking about is a supplement to Portland cement that brings a long list of benefits to the construction industry to such an extent that the life of future structures can endure for centuries instead of decades. Yes, we're talking about fly ash. Known as a coal combustion product, or CCP, fly ash has some many properties that actually improve the performance of concrete, especially in the long term. We get Portland cement by crushing limestone mixing it with other raw materials and burning them at 1450 degrees Celsius. This produces clinker, which is subsequently ground into Portland cement. The basic principle here is to use heat to produce a desired solid, cement. In coal-fired power generation, we use solids to produce heat and convert energy into power. Most power plants around the world burn coal but the residue of burnt fuel was for a long time considered of little use other than as a landfill material. Not anymore. These coal combustion products have a great potential value in various applications. The concept of using ash is not new. Ancient Romans found that the ash from Mount Vesuvius was a great cementitious material. But in the 20th century, we began to notice a paradox. If some structures can stand for thousands of years, how is it that our roads need fixing every year? One of the answers lies in the materials we use. Chemical reactions over time generate physical forces that impact the concrete and tend to deteriorate the integrity of concrete materials. When you mix up concrete, you have an aggregate that is surrounded by cement paste. This cement paste very quickly becomes supersaturated with calcium hydroxide by a chemical reaction known as hydration, which produces heat within the concrete during placement and for some considerable time afterwards. This can cause problems in the structure, problems which can be largely overcome with the use of fly ash. I think technology is enhancing the properties of the fly ash. We're also understanding how to use it more effectively in concrete. Any concrete made with fly ash makes better concrete, provided all the precautions are taken. So that's a must that you must have good quality control, you must have a good source of fly ash, and you must maintain your quality control during construction. We feel very positively about the quality of the final finish coming out of the form of fly ash concrete. It tends to be harder, it tends to have less cracks in it, it tends to be less porous. Uh, it gives off less dust uh, for exposed concrete, that's, that's important. Nowadays I think uh, researchers are being far more aggressive and ambitious in trying to replace more and more of the Portland cement component of concrete with materials like fly ash and, and, and other industrial byproducts to produce concrete with, uh, with a high level of uh, recyclable materials and yet very high durability. There are many reasons why you should use fly ash in concrete, and one of them is the impermeableness of it. It is very resistant to the ingress of water and of chlorides and of oxygen. All of these things contribute to the resistance of the concrete to resist the corrosion of the reinforcing bars. And in most uh, distress that you see on bridges and in buildings, it's a result of the splash of the icing agents on the concrete. The fly ash was used in the bell tower for the technical benefits uh, for the concrete. There's basically three reasons that we use fly ash in the bell tower. Firstly, the concrete is mass concrete and fly ash, or class F fly ash particularly, does have uh, an effect of reducing the thermal uh, gradients so that we don't get cracking from uh, uh, temperature induced uh, um, the, the high temperatures that come with just Portland cement. Uh, secondly, it, uh, it was a, a massive uh, placement, several hundred feet long, 
and we anticipated that we would get shrinkage cracking. So fly ash has an effect of reducing the unit water content, which is the main component of shrinkage. So we use the fly ash to reduce that uh, shrinkage. And then thirdly, uh, we knew we would have some cracking in, in the structure, and we didn't want leachates coming out of those cracks to make uh, ugly staining on the face of the uh, bell tower. So we used the fly ash to tie up the calcium salts, which are the main leachates from concrete, and that has worked quite effectively. In most of our projects, what we're doing is pre-testing and then pr uh, testing after the project's uh, completed. The uh, use of fly ash-based products in, in this type of reconstruction uh, gives us a much more durable pavement structure simply from the fact that the, the structure itself doesn't crack as much. All these ideas and objectives are made possible by the research and development that continues to improve the basic materials we need. And to do this, we need to know something about geology, chemistry, and a great deal of physics. In short, engineering. With the help of technology, we can discover which chemicals are present and their percentage within the sample. So we can guarantee that the desired combinations within any given mix are consistently analyzed and accurately recorded. Anyone in the construction business can tell you that concretes are not all the same. Far from it. That's why each phase of construction must have specifications as to the type of concrete required for that particular job. Project engineers may specify which building standards are to be used. There are many involving government and local authority requirements, and they apply according to the purpose of the job in question and the impact the project may have on the local environment. Very often, specifications will include provisions for the use of fly ash. The proper interpretation of these standards is crucial to ensure that appropriate quantities of fly ash are used for a particular construction practice or application. Marine applications such as dams and harbors, mass pours, floors, walls, pavings for roadways, sidewalks, parking lots, and so on. Performances are specified by measurable characteristics like compressive strength and or tensile strength, slump, air content, rapid chloride ion penetration, etc. Results have to conform to predetermined standards this machine is about five times the sensitivity of a clinical magnetic resonance imaging machine, which uh, is very, very effective in, in uh, imaging water three-dimensionally in the concrete. And as a result, we can show and demonstrate the superior product performance of concrete-containing fly ash. Our objective is to provide the highest quality and consistency in our fly ash. Coal combustion products, or CCPs, have many applications beyond those of conventional concrete. For example, flowable fill is a slurry that contains substantial quantities of CCPs that can be simply poured as a backfill to fill cavities and prevent subsidence in suspended mining operations. CCPs also have great value in well cementing slurries used in the oil and gas industry. Fly ash now finds its way into most of the concrete we see. The use of fly ash also extends to precast structures. In the past, the strength of the concrete was relatively low, and when you add fly ash to the concrete, it tends to delay the setting of the concrete now we go to a much higher strength concrete to start with and the stripping time is not essentially different from regular concrete. As a consequence you can go to a schedule that enables you to cast a floor every day with uh, concrete containing a substantial amount of fly ash. Finally, there is one significant benefit of fly ash that extends beyond its intrinsic properties and that is environmental sustainability. As a component of a concrete mix design, 
fly ash increases the performance benefits of the mix and at the same time reduces its environmental footprint. By replacing a portion of the cement used in the concrete mix, fly ash reduces the greenhouse gas emissions attributable to the application. The use of fly ash thereby reduces the impact that the cement industry and power utilities have on the environment in terms of GHG emissions produced in the manufacture of cement and landfill required for disposal of coal ash from industrial furnaces. So using CCPs helps industry to comply with increasingly stringent regulatory controls. As a good corporate citizen, everybody must contribute to the mechanisms which reduce CO2 emissions. And fly ash is one very simple way of doing so. I would say uh, locally, uh, well certainly in the uh, metro area, 90% um, of the concrete that's produced uh, contains uh, some level of fly ash. I think the pressure on architects and engineers to uh, find solutions to environmental problems is, is going to increase and uh, as such engineers and architects are going to have to become more knowledgeable about uh, alternative materials, alternatives to the traditional construction materials, their availability and, and how to use them. Fly ash is a valuable resource with a proven track record. In the years ahead, we must continue the work of developing even newer technology and innovative methods to build the world in which we live. In keeping with standard construction practices, appropriate testing of mixed designs with region-specific materials is required to assure constructability and durability. Application, together with environmental conditions on site, determine the specific methodology for a particular job.